All right. Um, so welcome to another um, Old Nubian video. Um, I was thinking to do a series about what I actually do in my quote unquote daily life as an epigraphist. And so what, what, what does an epigraphist do? Uh, because like when I started to do epigraphy, I had no idea uh, and no one really told me in the beginning what I was supposed to do and how I was supposed to do it. And so uh, I thought it would be fun and maybe slightly boring to see what we do when we deal with the text. And um, so I'm planning to do one video, maybe a series of videos about an inscription from Tamit. Um, Tamit is a uh, settlement in Nobadia. Um, it was excavated in the 30s and then again in 1964 during the UNESCO missions um, by the uh, Italian mission led by uh, Sergio Donadoni. And these findings were also published later in the 60s. Uh, there were multiple churches, importantly also Church of Raphael, where the inscription is from. Many paintings, like really beautiful sites, it is now lost and the publication that was made of it is really quite minimal. So there's still a lot of stuff in the archives that needs to be published and um, I'm going to use some archival materials uh, to look at this inscription, Old Nubian inscription again. And so in order to do that, I'm just going to share my screen with you. Um, and then we'll just see how this goes. So let me just share my screen. like to share. There we go. So you should be able to see my um, screen now. Um, so here you see the uh, little wiki on Tamit on the medieval Nubia wiki. I found a really badly scanned map here where we can see the location of Tamit which is uh, which is right here. So this is uh, the map from between the first cataract right here where you have Aswan and the third cataract here. And so this whole part, you know, this is all uh, just gone, it's underwater. So let's have a look. This is the um, edition of the text as it was published by uh, Sergio Donadoni, uh, who did not read Old Nubian very well and uh, the edition shows it. So uh, one of the first things that you will notice is that in order to transcribe a text, you will need to be able to understand at least a little bit of the language. In any case, you know, for example, to make differences between words, to like to cut, to cut the stream of letters, it's usually scripta continua. Uh, so continuous script to cut it in different words. Um, you know, when you guess something, you need to guess based on your knowledge of the language and otherwise it's you know it's just a random guess uh, if you reconstruct something it needs to be a plausible reconstruction and one of the things that are immediately visible are you know the enormous amount of engmas you know here and here um these like big c so to say um these are not that frequent or at least i'm suspicious when i see that they're so frequent um you know, words that clearly should be divided and not divided. In any case, this is this is uh, a transcription, and and as you will see, uh, there is also no uh, real translation. Um, that is clearly very long. It's like twenty six lines. Uh, the margins seem to be preserved. Like the left margin is preserved. The right margin seems to be mostly preserved. Right, there is some damage here. It seems, and there is like some vagueness on the edges, but. It seems as if we could do a better job at this. Um, as I said, the church is underwater, um, but we have some photographs. 
uh, that we can use. And uh, when the scan is high enough, or high resolution enough, then sometimes you can do a little bit of improvement. So today um, we're just going to see if we can make some improvement. So the text in question. Um, Usually I start, I start a new document. We have the inscription from Tamit. It's Siglum is Tamit. So this is how, for example, it's referenced in the Old Nubian Dictionary. It has, it has a DBMNT number. Um, the DBMNT is a database of medieval, medieval Nubian texts, which is a really handy tool um, developed by uh, Grzegorz Ochawa uh, at the University of Warsaw, in which most of the Old Nubian texts and Greek texts and um, and uh, Coptic texts from Nubia have been indexed. So um, we need to do a bit of an update of this database, but most texts that have been published, let's say before the mid 2000s um, are, are in here. And, um, or even, you know, maybe up to 2015 or 16, like it's only the last few years, I think that are still not completely integrated. Um, and so I literally uh, put in Tamit, uh, the provenance site, can uh, maybe do this again. And then, you know, which inscription is this then? Well, I have to, you can see here the bibliographical info. And I know that um, the text refers to Archangel Michael. Um, as you can see here, there is a, sorry, to Raphael. There is a reference here to Raphael. And I think I saw another Raphael here. So there are a few Raphaels in here. There's a King Yoel that's right here, Uru Yoel. And here again, Uru Yoel. So this is, this is probably our text. Um, so you see here where it was found in the Church of Raphael, east face of the pilaster in area H. So if you have the maps of the church, which are published by Donadoni, you can more or less see where it was. Um, we see it's the Pinto, so it's painted on top of plaster. Um, there's a dating. The dating is probably based on uh, architecture. Um, so that's not, you know, not entirely useless because this tells us this is 15th century. So that suggests that the language is also quite different. We expect it to be a bit different from, you know, classical literary texts. Um, and then also very nicely, we have here the mention of the names, this Joel. Um, and so this is important because if we have a date and we have the name of a king, we can situate a specific king in a specific time period. And so this text is really helpful in establishing, for example, a chronology of uh, Nubian royalty. Uh, and if we know a little bit more about this text, then, you know, we, we, we get more knowledge about, you know, what, what was the environment in which this king well operated. Um, you can see there's also bibliographical notes. Um, so this is the uh, first edition, as you can see, there are no um, there are no immediate other editions of the text. It is referred to in several other editions. Um, we don't have so much technical data, but again, this is useful. It also says almost complete upper right corner destroyed. Well, we could uh, we could see this here, right? This is the upper right corner that is uh, destroyed. Ink partly obliterated. You will see soon indeed that the ink is not really well preserved everywhere, but we can maybe Photoshop our way around this. Um, you know, I have now photographs and let's see other things. Yeah, some names, some offices. Bishop, uh, Bishop of Freem is mentioned here in line 14. That's probably what is going on here. So that's uh, useful to remember. Um, Ah, and we see here actually that we probably should look at this NOM3 number 12. So I'm going to make a note of this, that here there is another um, And what should this be? Actually, I don't know, figure five. Uh, so maybe if we go to the wiki, then um, so we have the guide to the texts and to see as well. So most of the abbreviations that you will find um, in the DBMNT are cross-referenced with this guide to the text on the media from Nubia Wiki. And so let's see what this is NOM. Ah, okay, so this is a 
uh, article by Grzegorz, so NOM 3, number 12. That is very useful um, because I should have this article somewhere here. NOM 3, there we go. You can see what Grzegorz has done with these texts. Tamit, there we go, blah, blah, blah. All right, so the only thing he did is uh, Merki, the Bishop of Ibri. So, so this is uh, from Hala. And he is Merki. So this is useful because in this way, we are sure that we're not duplicating work from other people, right? And so we have to do first a full investigation of um, of the text uh, and its and its publication history in order to you know figure out who has looked at this text. Maybe somebody made a note here. This is a useful note because like this is line fourteen, as you can see, there's still quite a bit of uh, uh, gaps in here. And so we will be able to correct this immediately uh, if we agree, of course, with um, uh, with Jagors. Uh, and I think we do agree. Um, we can immediately correct this, and it will uh, improve our reading. So we can close this. Um, I have duplicated the transcription of um, Donadoni in my uh, little uh, LibreOffice document. Um, and I guess we can just start it and, and look at the and look at the text. So let's uh, minimize this and let's uh, have a look where I put the photographs of the text. These guys. And so you may you may wonder how did you get these photographs? Um, and so here is where it becomes like really weird. Um, these photographs are usually in the archives of the missions, and my colleagues and me we sometimes travel to these archives to work in them, and then we make scans or we make photographs of the materials in there, and then we take them home. And then usually we need to ask permission in order to publish them. We need to ask permission to work on them, even though these things are just lying there and no one is really paying any attention because who in the end cares about this, uh, you know, uh, other than maybe two or three people in the world uh, to, to make a better edition because in the end it's already published. So like the big discovery has been made. And, um, and 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 so how I got these is from a colleague. It's like, oh, Vincent, you know, you should really look at this Tamid inscription. Have you seen this already? You know, I made some high res scans when I was working on the on the uh, images uh, and the, the paintings from the church. Um, you cannot publish this, of course, not without permission. But I figured that okay, I cannot publish this without permission. But I can obviously make a YouTube video about how I'm working on this. Uh, and I really don't see how that is uh, an abuse of anything. So let's see what we have. We of course have a bunch, fortunately actually a bunch of pictures. So we have a large overview picture. And you can see here at the bottom, things are a little bit less sharp, but here in the top, things are going quite well. You see that there is a bit of a distinction here in the, in the ink, right? So this here, you see the ink is fady. There is a bit of a destruction here. Um, the letters also seem to be a little bit more packed. And then this middle piece, you see the spacing becomes wider and wider. Um, let's see what else. And here we have a better uh, you know, idea about the context. So it is on a pilaster, right? So uh, it's uh, some of these verticals inside the church. This is useless, also pretty useless. Then here we have a better picture of the underside, but it's a bit dark as you can see. So they made also all of this stuff. This was before digital photography, right? So this was analog. You couldn't really see whether you were sharp. You couldn't really see whether you used enough light. And oh, this here, this nice uh, uh, sunglasses. Um, 
and so you had to be also you shouldn't be wasteful with your material right so you couldn't take a gazillion pictures of one inscription because you had a limited amount of you know rules um, that had to be developed in a lab and all of this cost money and you were under super amount of time pressure because this was literally flooding as it was being uh, documented. So like it, I've seen pictures where you literally see the water coming into the church and it's like, you know, we really have to get whatever we can. Um, so this must have been a really a high pressure situation. So this is a nice picture because it's sharp, as you can see. And it, I think it features this middle section right here, starting at Mishanka. So it's, it's, a, it's a good picture. It's like a close up of this. And then we have piece at the top from a slightly different angle. And sometimes the angle really helps because the light is reflected differently on the plaster and the ink. And so sometimes you can read some letters better. So this will be helpful. This is maybe a bit better over the bottom, but you can see it's just, it's just not really in focus. And then we have the last picture. Um, maybe this is a repeat of the first one. Um, as you can see, I can, I can zoom in quite a bit and, uh, and read these, read these letters. Okay. So otherwise the hand looks nice and clean. And so we're just going to compare this. We're just going to start comparing this. So what I do usually when we do, when I do a re-edition is, um, uh, we start, uh, we start comparing and we start first to catch all the obvious mistakes. And then slowly, slowly, you can start reading, quote unquote, whatever is written. Um, so let's just zoom in a little bit. Um, there we go. And we start with the first line. So what do we have? Well, the cross was missing. We had the cross. Um, what does he say? Papide. Okay. So this seems reasonable. Um, it starts with the invocation of the Holy Trinity. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as we can see here, we already have Onsa Wartu and then Engma. Is this an absolute, this is an Engma here. We have, what do we have here? There's a Sigma here and there's a Yota here and there's a Delta here. And there's probably the shape of an, uh, an epsilon, not entirely clear. Um, then we expect it to continue like this. Um, there should, this is a, this, well, this cannot be a new, this should be a new, this is what you expect. Um, on. And then what you expect here is not that or something. And the question is, can we see anything of that here? All right. So this is the father and this is our, uh, post position, uh, uh, conjunction. This is another conjunction. Uh, and here we have another conjunction. So we have on, on. So it means that um, after this on, we expect the word for son, right? So the father and the son and the Holy Spirit. We can also assume that the son ends in de, right? Because we have de on, de on, de can, most probably. Um, the question is like, so what I'm a bit worried about is the following. Um, uh, all right, so let's see where it is. So here, the good thing is, is that the next line starts with I. In other words, the invocation of the Holy Trinity ends here. It's, so it's two lines. But as you can see, the line ends here, but there's nothing here, right? No. There's nothing really here. Nothing is visible here. So the question is, how far did they write on the first line? As you can see, this cannot be very large. 
So what I'm thinking, what I'm assuming now is there was nothing here and this is a short line. There is just no other solution. Um, we don't know why this line is short, why they didn't just continue. Maybe already there was already some damage here uh, in the time it was written and they simply did it continue. Um, but at least what we can figure out is that we now know uh, what should be here. It's, it's just simply in the name. Sometimes also it's written, it is written like Partacona or something, but here's just in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that means that this is not Ia Ia, um, but this must be, as you can see here, this letter is an omega. Uh, this must be a superlinear stroke, still visible here. Then the letter that comes before it um, must be a lambda, and we can see a diagonal here, right? Um, not, if I didn't know it was there, uh, I wouldn't have an idea. And that means that we can also fill this lacuna with the standard um, something like this. And let's see if that would actually see. So we have this. I don't know about this epsilon here. As you can see, this is really long. Yeah, it, it seems as if this engma is just really just continuing onto the sigma here. I, I don't see anything else. So actually what I would do is I would write this like this. Right, because we have the stroke here with C. Then the delta here, we see part of the triangular shape quite closely, right? You can see here how tight the delta and the epsilon are packed. So that's right here. Then whatever is here, you see maybe still, this is part of the lower loop, the lower hook of the epsilon. So that's, you know, barely visible. So we usually dot the letter when we really cannot read it unless there is enough context. And then the rest, well, actually the kappa here is, we can actually, this is a barely readable kappa right here. That can, and then we need four more letters. Yeah, so four more letters here. Well, let, then we usually just take a bunch of four letters. So we have, uh, so our, so we just take this. It's about this size, what does it say? 314. So just we can eyeball it a little bit. Let me make something with 314. Ah. Like here. So it would be something like this. And so the new word would end here. We have a space. Then we have the word for name, tongue is, or however it was spelled, right? So there, there are many ways you can spell it like this. Uh, maybe it was spelled with a new. We don't know really, right? But it's a reconstruction and, um, or maybe it was even like this. Thanks to the Anyhow, um, it doesn't really matter how it was spelled. We know that this is the thing that must have been there. Then the only thing that is left here is to figure out what they wrote here. Now, we now know that, look at this, this engma, these can be sometimes very, very long. So look at how long this thing is. What is curious here is that we expect another sigma, um, usually because Nisi Holy is written with two sigmas. Um, right here, you can see another one, how long this thing is, this engma, like really long. And this is, this is, this is a uh, aspect of these, of these descriptions sometimes. So why I'm saying this is that, we expect, therefore, we have a long angma here. Look, here's another long one. A long angma here. Um, we have a long angma here. And so it may very well be that the angma of nadde or nalde is also long. So we have the nu here. The nu is, is pretty well readable. And the question is, is this then our alpha? Right, we see a triangular shape. It's either an alpha or a delta. Um, uh, 
and it's probably an alpha because as you can see, the line goes like this. I don't know, can I, can I draw on this real? The line goes like this. And then there is this and it goes up, right? So actually let's, right, this goes like this. And then we have Ryota here on Right, so somewhere here is this part of the line, maybe. Don't know. Right, but we see this alpha here, and we, we know this is an alpha because of the hook. Right, if you, if you look at the hook, there is this, always this hook with an alpha. And if we find a delta, the delta is flat. So what we now know here is that there is an angma here somewhere but it's, it's no longer, I, I really don't see any visible trace of it. So I'm just gonna write it. There is an alpha, which is pretty good, pretty well visible. And then the rest is in this lacuna. So this is how we construct it. It could also be this in some text, but in any case, we are just reconstructing and um, we are now done with the first line, I think. there. All right. Oh, yeah. And then to show you a little bit how this last line goes. So we have again, our alpha here with a dot. And this thing goes like this. Right. And then here is probably the beginning of our lambda. And then this, all of this is pretty, pretty well readable, right? First line. Uh, um, and we have our sawar two. So let's see how actually this goes. This is a row. Our tau. This again is our alpha. The epsilon is visible here, and we see here the three little arms. Right, and then we have an omicron here. And then epsilon here. It's not very nice, like so. Okay, so we did, we corrected now the first two lines. So this is already a bit of an improvement. Also, these were the easiest ones because we know what it is supposed to say. And then the only thing we really have to figure out is how it was spelled. Now things become a little bit more difficult, right? So we start with um, I, I, and then mama, a name. Then, completely illegible. I have no idea what it says here. I would have to go back and see. He reads here these letters, but I really don't. Uh, at least I'm just gonna dot all of this because this is completely destroyed. What I know, the only thing I really know is that this is an alpha. So I can, I can agree with, you know, the alpha here. And of course the name then or not to continue. On okay. This may be a first singular possessive pronoun. He says Gia, but it can also be pa. Right, maybe a letter here, E N. Um, I don't know if this is a gamma, maybe. And this is our, 
capital Z, right? So this is clearly an epsilon, right? Let's do that's like this. Out. Maybe there's a line here. Don't know what it's off. This may be a lambda, but maybe it's a nu. I don't know. This doesn't mean anything. I mean, my something, something. We still haven't identified the verb, which is always an issue. Like we should, we should find a verb before we can really start reconstructing this sentence. Is this super linear stroke? Next line, line five, starting here. I'm not so sure about any of these readings. B, maybe a row. Okay, row, okay. The row I can live with. Ooh. Okay, knees again. Yes, yeah, so you'll see this. There's this long. So maybe, yeah, you can see maybe there's this off here. As you can see, it's sometimes very difficult to figure out what is a, for example, here it is, let, okay, so we have here the line above, right? We have alpha here. Then there's a line here, there seems to be a diagonal And so he reads this as on, but then where's the gamma? This is a, this is a straight line up. Okay. I can, I can see a shape of an, of an M here. All right. But sometimes it's difficult to see like, what is a, what is a letter? What is a, you know, what, what is something, what is a shadow? Anyhow, um, then we get to something nice because as you can see here, we start counting things. Two of something, three. And we've seen these types of texts where they start counting one, two, three, four, five. So if we find a delta, a bit later on in the text, then that suggests that we can find an alpha for the number one a bit earlier, then maybe this is going, this is a counting thing. Um, zoom out a little bit. All right, so we have the number How is it? Number two here, number three. Oh, that stops. Maybe there was a number here. No. So no number here, one piece of something. No, that's not very helpful, right? So what you try to do is you try to find structural elements. So sometimes it's a list of things and they're numbered. Sometimes it's a list of goods and they're not numbered, but you know, you see that, you know, there are 20 things of this, there's one of this, there's five of this, and then you can develop a structure and, and, and they usually have a similar grammatical construction. And then you can say, okay, so like if this has a law here, then that must have a focus marker law there even though I have to reconstruct it, but then my reconstruction is based on an understanding of what the text is supposed to say. 
So you try to find these structural clues. One of the other things I'm really looking forward to find is a verb. Yeah, so, so you know, there is an I here, an I mama, who is probably something, something. If this kappa is correct, there is an accusative, but like, what is this? You know, is this, is this me, is this angimme? Like, I think, I remember, but then this de makes no sense whatsoever. All right, so I have not, I am like, you know, three lines in and there's no verb yet. And this, what does it mean, holy? Or is this part of the, you know, unknown? So this is, uh, yeah, it's maybe frustrating. Maybe that's how you could say it. Now let's, let's have a look at. So we have the beta, so the number two, okay. Then he reads epsilon tau, so epsilon tau, tau is okay. Okay, Engma. Mod. Modi. So that is Lord, possibly. So I don't know. And I would dot this because I have no idea if this is an epsilon like it. There is something, but. The question is, if this is the word for Lord and this is Yota and this is, I don't know what this is. Is this an alpha? Maybe. Uh, this is all dotted. This is completely unreadable, I would say. This is not even there. Don't know. Then we have Sen, okay, good. Gamma, so number three. Are these names? So, okay, let's, let's have a look at this word. We have an epsilon here, good. Yota here also agreed. Is there anything? I don't know, but here is, okay, an omega. This I don't believe at all. What are these things? I'm just gonna drop these. He says this is a kappa, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. There. This thing is quite clear. Da, 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 up. What happens here? I have no idea. It could be a name, huh? so there are a lot of names in Unga. Maybe this is an Omicron. Unclear. Gu Fat. Yeah, go look at these beautiful files. Uh, so he reads a wow here. So he reads something like this. Or we have another wow here. How are they written? Sometimes the scroll, okay, can you look, the scroll goes this way. So he reads this. I only read a top. It could be a tau, it could be a wow. I find this suspicious. I don't know exactly what this is. This is fine. Gamma, Omicron, Epsilon, Phi, Phi, Alpha. All right, so we continue our first pass. So this is clearly double kappa. O, key. Right, so what he read, look, this is what you read when you don't understand Nubian, right? So what he read is um, Omicron, Yota, he forgot this thing, and then he read a Kappa here. Then I don't know how he even read this. 
well, it's clear that there is an Omicron here, Kappa. Kappa always has this little gap between the two strokes. Uh, and this looks to me like this. So, maybe this is some type of verb. Um, yeah, <laughs> nothing, nothing. Maybe two, three letters. Two dots, and then in, so right clear. Then we have a name, Rafael in. So we have Rafael here, we have Rafael here, we have Rafael here. Here you see again, Tilly Rafaela, so the god of Rafael. Notice again here this single, so the hablography of the lambda. This should usually be like this. Um, or actually, if you want to be super, super correct, it should be this, Tilly Rafaela, god of, um, actually no. No, it should usually be the other way around. Michael Tila, Tilly Rafaela. That's really interesting. So, so there are all this, this whole series of prayers that you know address God through the intercession of an archangel. Yeah. So you have like things like Raphael Tilla, God of Raphael, Oh God of Raphael, uh, Michael Tilla, Oh God of Michael. But here it's the other way around. Tilly Raphaela. So Raphael of God. So holography, late text, right? Here also holography of the sigma here. Another Raphael here. Okay, so we, we go back here. In Raphael, so like obviously this alpha is not is not really readable and it should be dotted, even though we know it's there, right? Because it's a name, Raphael, and we need a super linear stroke here, right? This thing is really quite clear, this dot here. Uh, Raphael, and, and then we have this beautiful, right? So we have this, let's construct this nicely. Dot here. Is a little bit ugly. Supposedly, this continues, right? Um, we have our row here, and we have something of an alpha here. No, then we have our new and our epsilon very clear, right? So, presumably, this continues here, but apparently chipped off or like broken off. Now, What do we read here? Para. So this is a field. Now fields are often mentioned in, yeah, this is quite clearly a row. This is okay row. I'm, I'm also okay with this epsilon here, but this is a gamma. So this is nonsense. And this is a round shape. think go I'm just gonna relate the dot here we'll come back to it later let's go to the next Gonna have Raphael. Look at here this nice V here, Raphael lead. So the field of this Raphael church, assumably or the field of your Raphael church, probably the field of this Raphael. So this, ref this refers to the plot of land that belongs to the church of Raphael. 
don't think there's anything here. All right. Uh, there's a dot. There's just. Oh, so there's three dots. Yeah, so it's one of these three dot things. Like we see one, two, three, two, two, two. Which suggests then this is really the end of the thing. So this, this okay, so whatever this is going on here, this must be a verb form. This is a second past. So unfortunately, our, our person marking or something or okis, you know, kisen, kisin, kisina, kisna, kisra is gone. Uh, but uh, we'll have to check the dictionary if this, if there's something there. So then we have. This field, Barago. You know, the thing I'm already worried about is like, why is there a gamma? What is this gamma here? There is no ending after a noun that starts with a gamma. So maybe it's go for ko. Right, it's a latex. So like, we expect some weird spellings. Um, Rafa lead. Ah, okay, but then you should make up your mind. So he thinks that maybe the two dots belong to here, but then this is a single dot. Right, either these dots belong to a interpunction mark, and it's just this, and then these two dots belong here, right? This is just the long yota. Oop. Right, Rafa. This is the alpha here. Rafa Ali. And we have our delta here. The question is Is this. Do I see this correctly? Or am I imagining this correctly? Okay, you don't know, right? Because you see there is also this line going here. In any case, we don't expect the word just to end in nothing, uh, in only a delta. That's just not that's just not how we do things in Onubian. So there should be a letter here that's lost. Or maybe it's an omega, but I would have no idea how that would work. So Look at this thing, beautiful. He says it's a gamma. Okay, this I'm a little bit suspicious about this hook and an alpha here. Okay, I accept. But this letter here, I don't know what it is. Then we have a verb. Yes, the verb to take. Doom. Doom me. Maybe. Se. I don't know. I gave. Or I took. Sorry. I took. But then. Is this a kappa? Not so clear. This maybe is not clearly an alpha. Just gonna put a dot here. Don't know this yet. So we have here a potential verb. We have here a potential verb. This reconstruction. Yeah, probably like two letters. There's you know, so we have this yota here, okay. Then there is this thing here. Is this a thing? Who knows? Looks like this is some type of trace. Maybe it is. All right. It's not strange to reconstruct it to, to think that this is a sigma simply for this reason that we have a sigma here. So this could both be a past two tens. So I'm actually not just let's, let's just do this for the moment. 
Right, and we're dealing with an I. So I awk. Actually, I have no idea what this word means. To open or something. Took. Where are the objects? This is the question. Where are the objects? Where are my accusative case markers? Here should be an object. This should be object marked. That's why I'm thinking, is this kappa alpha? But this is, there's not enough place. Are we already so late that this has all merged phonologically? Even what is this, what is this word? Ngag, ngaga? Okay. Maybe it is Ngaga. It's Sun. Very strange spelling. Oh. Never seen this spelling before. Don't know. And then, presumably, then a new sentence. Uru io well do. I don't know where he gets this super linear stroke from. To or upon King Yoel. Well, again, you know, yo. Only if you know what it says, right? It's only because we have Yoel again a little bit later in line 17. Let's see how it is written here. Also, yeah, this yota, this epsilon, uh, sorry, eta is a little bit more clear. Okay, he missed this uh, dot here, right? So we have eo. This presumably is, and the eta is usually quite tight. So there should at least be this thing. You all do. Good. Delta, clear, new, clear. There are more than two letters here. This is an epsilon, okay, yeah. So this is clear. Yeah. This is clearly a delta. This indeed may be an epsilon. But here may be one or two letters. And this looks like a verbal form. Again, not so very clear. Ah. Ka. Two letters? No, definitely not two letters. What is this? Epsilon. This is a number. This is again a number. Delta, gamma, alpha, beta, maybe an alpha, beta, gamma. Ah. Is this maybe our delta for the counting? Maybe. A bonking Yoel, five of these from the church. I don't see anything else. I said this is this must be okay. For the moment, I'm gonna just consider this a number. I just don't see anything else here in between, whereas these letters are really clearly readable. Key se law. Done. In at two from the church. Again, hoplography for the sigma here. Usually we expect this. Okay. Now, now this, yeah, this is clearly a new sentence. So where 
Who reads a Yota? I can no longer see this Yota. Very, yeah. Uh, Where does he read this law? I read no law here at all. I just see the end of the word. Yota is not clearly readable. Sorry, this is uh, only. No, no. So, what I read is beautiful. Wow, look at this epsilon here. Oops. Then we have a row. Number one. Maybe this, he reads Sagilon. I can no longer read this properly, but it is not unlikely. Uh, whatever is here, this is clearly yeah, very. Yeah, dot, dot, a number, alpha, okay, I accept. Not very clear what this letter is. So this is charge. And the charge upon one, upon one of the church. Now that makes no sense. Oh. Yeah. Allo, okay, I can go with that. Talk, Tore. Uh, this is simply okay. So now we're getting into the counting. A law of this, a law T. I have no idea. This is unclear. This is also unclear. Ah, uh, see here is the here's the beginning of the line. So this really cannot be that many letters, right? You see, so the, the line goes like this: the margin. This is our margin here, right? So how many letters can we have here? It can only be one letter here, really. He is imagining an insane amount of stuff here. The margin doesn't go as far as this. one, maybe two letters here. Maximum, I mean, no, I'm just gonna say one for the moment because like here we have already, you know, our long, yeah. This looks to me like a lambda, a lambda or a new. Tilon. Uh, difficult to say where the line ends. It clearly ends here, but here, or this is a tau actually. Yeah, this, this is not very clear what this is. Sometimes you start to see things. Sometimes you always start to see things. Power until, okay, or power. Ah, power, yeah, so this may be power con, so the, the, those who have the authorities. Ah, okay, now we get something. Power con. Yes, oh my God, look at this. So we have the authorities, all the authorities, and this is a common turn of phrase, calling upon all the authorities. Paui, and look how this is spelled, right? Kong, this, oh, Konikoa, hop, end of line. 
beautiful, nearly a full line. Then we have all, Mishan, yes. Here we have the M, let's get rid of this thing here. Mishan, I don't read these super linear strokes to be frank. Okay, hey. This is clearly one thing. I don't know what this is, but this to me looks like, okay, fine, tau. Tau, this is a round form. Two C, beautiful Jima. Ah. A verbal form. This is a verbal form. Okay. I really want to read something like this. Tushija. Cursing all authorities. I don't know. I don't know these letters. Um, but we finally have a real verb form and, and like, look at this, a whole, a whole object. Ah, now we get to, um, Well, Jaeger is reconstructed, so Mer, yeah, is Yota. Look, look how, look how long the Yota is of Yoel with the DRSs. Mer, Ro, Mer. Okay, yeah, it goes on to here. Okay, good. Merki, seal, this can be min, and then we have Papa. Slow. Okay, so now we're starting to see lists of names. Mm. This is just a mirage, this is the end of the line. No, it's not a list of name. This may be an address. To Merki, the Bishop of Ibrim. Sigarinka, yeah, this certified document. This is strange. This usually is a word you find, Sigarin, Sigarinka. This is usually a word that you find in um, letters, not on walls. Paya, okay, there's also Denna, Den. This N is, well, this new is readable. Then alpha also quite okay, I would say. Now let's, let's mark this. Let's see the beautiful delta. This is okay. Alpha here. That was really quite far out, yeah? So. This, this right margin is not, and then there is somewhere a new here. And this is alpha. Maybe with the line on a little bit like this. Okay. He reads law. Maybe he reads a lot there here. But then what's this? I'm not believing it. So what is nice is this, this paya then means to write for me, write this certified document for me, but then write this certified document for me too. That makes no sense. Anyhow, Tillin, okay. Hi. 
I see nothing here. We have other photos also, right? So at some point we'll go look through the other photos. See if we can get a better view of this. Actually, let's do this now. Uh, this is too dark. This is this middle piece. This is on sharp. Sharp, sharp. Uh, this would be better. No. Maybe this one here. Okay, maybe it's not so bad. Not much better than this. Um, okay, here is a whole bunch of things. What on earth? Okay. I'm reading the mood. Fine. This alpha. Okay, so let's just start marking up what we actually can read. Mood. Fine. Kappa. Okay. Taking it. Epsilon. Alpha. So kappa. Okay. Fine with that. Row. He reads a row here. Okay, this epsilon is well readable. Sama, no, we're not in Japan. I would say there's another moon here. Something. Maybe it's just my imagination. There's a letter for sure. I don't see maybe a letter. I don't even know. Ainon, okay. Then we have Yoel here. So, this is... yeah, this lambda is really only visible if you know what it says, right? So, we have there's a crack or something here in the plaster. So, we have EOL, presumably. This is also quite okay. Now, Meralon, okay, Rho, Alpha, Lambda, Omicron, Nu, okay. This is clearly a Mu. Is there something here? What is this? Don't know. Mm, and what does he read here? Uru. Oh my god, this is really if you have a lot of willpower. I read an Omicron. There's a trace maybe here of whatever this Upsilon was supposed to be, but and the rest is to be reconstructed. Oh, I read the all. The alpha is okay, man. Come on. These two love does. I have no idea. Ba, 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 ba. But the good thing is, is that we know then. Oh, why is this so? Why is this so ugly? Don't have anything better. Ugh. This may be slightly better. I know this here. Meralon. Uh, yeah, is this a lambda? What is this? This is nothing. This is not identifiable except for, you know, there is this uh, this type of shape here, maybe. Yeah, you see this. This you see this the, this whole thing. This is all damage. This. This is gone. Uh, 
Row. A little turn wheel of death. Oh, for God's sake. All right, so I had to restart. Obviously, uh, we lost all our markings, um, but that's okay. And we are back with our line. And so let's just see if we can at least get until the end of the of our first run through. So I had marked this whole piece here as uh, as damage. Then we have. Right, it's only one dot that are two here. Oh. This is very thick. Now suddenly. Right. Then we have here. Okay, this is only when you know what it says. These are readable. This is something. I would just say there is a lacuna here. All right, it's this damage piece here. Parre, okay. Tanila. A new to his field in his field. Tanila, yeah. Did some letters, some something, something broken off. Maybe it's a dot here. I don't know about that. There's a bunch of stuff here. New indeed. Then again, the word Raphael. Taka. An object. That's nice. Him. It. Dip. Not so sure. Don't see the dots. No. This is not a P, this is an eta. This dot is nothing. This now looks like a... Um, I would nearly say that there should be an alpha here. This looks like a, this is a gamma. This is a use of verb form here. Ham, a verb, yay. So there's something here. Iro. 
Erodi Erodi de Ka All right, this is um, Jude. This nearly looks like this isn't of course, like Herod, Judas. Jude. Jude de, okay, this must be a kappa. It's not very well readable. The Kel. Da -le. with Judas and da -da -da and this is a curse at the end. May he be tied, bound with yeah, may he be bound with Herod. Okay, so now now we at least have even some understanding. Iro the the uh, the epsilon is absolutely you know reconstruct those like half red maybe i i don't read this but we can probably find other examples of this specific course may he yeah be bound with may he reside with And Judas, you de, you da. And we have a D here. You, oh, right, D, D. Oh. E, lambda, kappas here. And then he read da, which if it indeed is there, it definitely should be dotted, but he read it. So maybe you read something right for a change. This should be an alpha. And yeah, because it's the name of Judas, but it's clearly only when you know it should be there. All right, we see this shade of a diagonal. Emetica, then this becomes very problematic. Apo, Apo Kalma, Apo Kalama, super linear stroke here. This is one word, it's probably a Greek word. Popa Akalamu, Ma, 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 yeah, Teal indeed. Wow, uh, uh, super unclear. Okay, so that's the first pass. Um, I'm gonna stop here for today. Um, let's see if we can get up our... Um, Oh, come on, for the love of God, let's go. Our original publication, there we go. And we can see we made quite a bit of progress actually. So, we were able to separate words a little bit better. We constructed the whole beginning here, so this is nice. We also managed to deal with this probably some type of curse part at the end, which is not unknown in transcription. Um, we have here these all authorities, which is also nice that we didn't really clearly have. And then it's just a small core, there's a lot of small corrections like this. Well here, where did you get that from? We have some ideas about verbs, a verb here, a verb here, a verb here, digame is a verb here. This, yeah, I'm not so sure about what about is going on here. 
maybe an invocation of God here in the end. Then clearly what, what we should focus on the next time is to figure out what the hell is going on here. Um, probably until here, like this, this whole section. Because here it's talking about charges and, and the numbers of things. And also this on suggests that a new part is starting. So I think our first part ends here. Also the things that are numbered. We have to figure out what is this Gufa. It deals with fields of the Raphael church. So it, it's a really weird mix of things. Fields of the Raphael church, but also a certified document that is mentioned that should be written. More fields and a curse. And no specific request because usually like oh god of Raphael please give me this please give me that and yeah unless that's somewhere hidden in here well we will see next time so for the moment i hope you enjoyed this uh run through of uh, how to re-edit a uh, already published text and try to understand a little bit more about what is going on here precisely and, uh, well, see you next time.